guests appearing on the program may have commercial arrangements with some of the companies mentioned. Before making any investment, insurance or financial planning decisions, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Hello and thanks for tuning in to the property edition of Your Money, Your Call and welcome back for another week in property. Before I introduce my two guests, let's take a look at what's making news this week. And the value of investment loans written in February surged to their highest level since the GFC. According to ratecity.com.au, analysis of ABS housing finance data, investors borrowed $7.9 billion for property investment purchases in February this year. This is the highest value of investment loans written in one month since January 2008. According to Rate City spokesperson Michelle Hutchinson, while the residential home loan market is a much bigger pool of money compared to investment loans, 13.9 billion compared to 7.9 billion, the growth rate in the former is a lot higher. And the Gold Coast has dropped from its recent high of 239 average days on the market in March to 225 days in April in the latest Australian Property Monitor's table of time on market. Property Observer has found some recent sales that experienced a lengthy time on the market and a typically big drop on their original asking prices. A two-bedroom, two-bathroom unit on West Burley Road, Burley Heads, sat on the market for 226 days before selling for three. 314,000, although it had a listing price of 319,000. That same property sold in March last year for 379,000 after only sitting on the market for 60 days. To chat about what this might mean for property on the Gold Coast and, of course, answer your questions about property investing, I'm pleased to welcome back to the program Noel Petrahilos from BMT and Louis Christopher from SQM Research. Now it's going to be a busy night, so my advice is to get in early if you do have a question so that you don't miss out. You can do this by calling us now on 1300 30 34 35. Of course, as always, you can email us on property at skynews.com.au and welcome to the program and welcome to you both. Thank you Margaret. Noel, good to see you back. You and Thank I haven't you. been on together for a little while. No, it's been a while, about six months I think. And of course you're here representing BMT. Now I've been uh, doing my seminar roadshow around the country. I'm going to talk more about that a little bit later on in the show. Yes. And you guys have come along with me and it's great to have you on board yeah, talking to the people who come along to the to the the seminars and talk, yep. telling them a little bit more about depreciation. Yeah, it's one of those things that uh, I guess it's, it's an education where we're selling money, you know, the, there's, there's deductions out there to be claimed and, um, you know, unfortunately some investors are missing out and uh, the, the more we get out there and in front of people and, and explain the bits and pieces about depreciation, it pretty much sells itself. So our, our, a big part of our game is educating property investors. Yeah, and it's great. Yeah. You do a really good job and you certainly, I know all of my clients who give you a call, they, um, you guys are really nice to them and you spend a lot of time very patient with them give, them, give them a lot of sort of free guidance initially and hopefully eventually they come back and actually get a report from you. Yeah, but definitely. you guys are very patient, which is great. Great yeah, news. So. Definitely. Louis, welcome. Thanks, Margaret. Louis, a uh, lead story tonight about the Gold Coast and the APM figures, but I know that SQM research has also been doing a fair amount of work in that space and you showed me something really interesting off set tonight. Do you Absolutely. want to show, show us here. all that again? I will. All right. So we're talking about, I know it's a story that was about days on market. Well, here is a full booklet. It's almost like the size of a Bible of properties just in one postcode that's surface paradise that have been on the market for over 60 days. Most of these have been discounted. Uh, we're seeing massive discounts. The ones that are in that story pales into comparison with what's actually happening. Mm. So there's some properties there we're aware of that were sold, say, in 2007 for about $560,000 and they're now begging for offers around three fifty. dollars mm. uh, So there's been some big discounts, some big price falls in that area. I get emails all the time from people who are wanting to invest on the Gold Coast, feeling that the market must now be at the bottom 
People keep looking for the bottom of the market without realising that the bottom can literally be the actual bottom, as in almost no value. Um, and a lot of people have their high hopes on the Commonwealth Games and believe that just because there's a Commonwealth Games happening, they need to get in early to take advantage of that. I'm a little dubious about the Commonwealth Games' capacity to actually impact on values. Well, the facts are it's going to be the Budget Games. They're not actually spending a lot of money on infrastructure on the Gold Coast for the Games. So there's not really going to be a lot of new roads into the area. Uh, there's, uh, there's, not, there's only going to be about one or two new venues being built. Uh, it's not a lot of money. This is really the Budget Games and I fail to see how that's going to really drive employment for the area. What we really need to see though is a fall in the Australian dollar. Mm. Now if we were to get that then you would actually have an increase in the number of tourists uh, full of Gold Coast, which is really the, the main driver for the economy there, and that would help the housing market. Mm. The thing about the Games as well, uh, Louis and, and Noel, is thinking back to the Games in 2000, the Olympic Games, which was a far bigger thing, lots more infrastructure, and home bush all around there, people bought up property thinking it was going to be like this magic bullet, and we didn't really see values in home bush move until 10 years after the Games, and even then it was on the back of some significant extra infrastructure out that way, and I think other countries can pretty much report the same results, that, mm. that a Games like the Olympic Games or the Commonwealth Games really doesn't deliver an impact to property prices. No, that's right. And I think maybe for the period when it's actually on, you may be able to get some premium in your rents for about one or two weeks. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm, exactly. And really, there's a great premium, but it's not going to help you over the long term. Let's go to the phones now. And Ilanko from Sydney, I believe you've got a question about Concord in New South Wales, Elanco. Yes, Margaret, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, I have a question for you and, uh, and the gents. Um, look, I, I currently live in Concord, um, so I've, um, I've, uh, I've got a property in Concord uh, where I'm currently residing. And um, look, uh, there, there is another uh, uh, piece of land or with, with an old house that had come up um, uh, for an auction. So I'm interested in investing uh, in the property. Um, what, do you, what do you think are the growth prospects for Concord and, and and, and the surroundings there. Mm. Look, I'm going to go first of all to Louis and get his impressions in terms of some figures that I know that he will probably be able to pull up for that. And then I'm going to tell you what Noel and I think about Concord. Uh, Louis, what do you think? Okay, so over the past 12 months, where we've actually seen uh, three bedroom houses uh, rise substantially. We've actually got about a an over a 15% increase in the three bedroom homes in terms of valuations. For units it's a little bit more moderate, it's about 8%. Uh, so overall I'd have to say Concord's actually been doing fairly well over the past 12 months and, and beating the Sydney wide average. Okay, and what do you think about Concord for an investment in the future? No. Yeah, look, I don't, I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't tell what's going to happen. Oh, All we can do. I told you to bring you crystal ball tonight. No, I left that home. I left that home. Um, my wife's got it at, okay. at the moment. But uh, look, it's, it, it is a. It, as, as Louis said, it has uh, had some good history there in the last 12 months. Um, it is an expensive buy, and I think. I think there's uh, probably a little bit better in, uh, in some of the other uh, western areas of Sydney. But look, Concord's got a lot going for it. It's very central, it's close to the city, it's got um, you know, a, lot of, a lot of infrastructure around it. It's you know, the low vacancy rate that that, that that area shares with most of Sydney is still there. Um, it just worries me a little bit to see a, a viewer looking to keep everything nearby and in their street and, 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 and in their comfort zone that they know about. Um, you know, in, in my experience in investing, you've really got to look at the numbers more so than what's in your in the the, the street down the back or a street that you know so well. Yeah, look, that's some good advice, Alanka, and I'd like to add to what Noel and Louis are both saying and say that I think if you're looking to invest in property, you're probably going to get a better result elsewhere, and that's not to say that Concord will have a bad result. It's just that when we invest in property, our aim should be that for every property we buy, we buy it just before it's about to have its significant boom period. And we can ask a whole lot of questions 
about that area to help us centre in on whether or not the biggies exist, such as significant infrastructure planning, population growing faster than the national average, median household income also growing faster than the national average, and maybe something special that's happening there that means we're going to see a big boom. Places like Concord have already had that happen in their past, and while they'll continue to grow because there will be a fairly good demand behind them, we're not going to see that squeeze in areas like that that suddenly have them skyrocketing along because they're the areas that have already been there. You now need to find a Concord elsewhere that hasn't already had some really good growth that is about to because it has the same sorts of things. I also echo Noel's sentiment about wanting to buy in your own backyard and I know there's a comfort with that but you're already invested in Concord once. If you buy there again then everything you own will be in this, the one single market. If it goes well that's fantastic. But if it doesn't go so well, then all of your eggs are in that one basket. It's time you invest it outside of your comfort zone. Look for something that could perhaps have a better rental yield for the price that you pay and something that might even be in a different state altogether so that you're expanding your portfolio and diversifying at the same time. This week we're continuing with our question of the week and it's your chance to get hold of a copy of one of my books. Now if you haven't heard of this before, it works like this. Every Monday night the panel and I will choose one question from either the emails or the calls and we'll send a copy of one of my books. This week the best email will receive my latest book, Investing in the Right Property Now. And if you're ready to buy, this guide will make sure that you understand exactly where you should be looking. All you have to do is call us on 1300 30 3435 or email property at skynews.com.au with a question. Then make sure that you watch at the end of the show to see if you're the person that we choose. It's time now for us to take a short break, but stay with us. When we come back, we'll take some more calls and, of course, answer your questions. Don't go away. Welcome back to the show. I'm Margaret Lomas and you're watching Your Money, Your Call with this evening. Louis Christopher from SQM Research and Noel Petrahilos from BMT and Associates are helping me to answer your questions. Now I believe that we already have another caller on the line and if you'd like to join them, call us now on 1300 30 3435 or email us at property at skynews.com.au. Now Brian, you're on the line now. If you'd like to ask us your question, I believe it's about the Gold Coast. Uh, yes, uh, Margaret, thanks for taking my call. Um, I, I was interested in those comments from uh, SQM Research, you know, who, who I think are a fabulous agency, by the way. Um, uh, that clothing service paradise as the, the stereotypical Gold Coast property market, uh, which seems to me to be dominated by the unit properties, and uh, is not representative of the statistical district of the Gold Coast, which mm. stretches from Beanley to uh, Coolangatta. Yes. Now, there are a lot of houses on the Gold Coast. What, ha what happened to them? Okay. Look, that's a really good uh, question, Brian. And, um, you know, it's one that I wanted to talk about as well, Louis, in yep. that even though we're talking uh, specifically about service paradise and Gold Coast and what people think is being the Gold Coast, which is generally that big unit market, we do have some suburbs which is in the Gold Coast Shire that actually probably won't be performing quite as badly. Mount Warren Park, um, parts of Beanley, which has now been um, rezoned about eight, nine years ago into being part of the Gold Coast. Maybe Coomera and a couple of those other suburbs that are a little bit more bread and butter. What kind of figures have you got on any of those areas? Well, I'm sorry to say I have to disagree. I mean, I, I do agree with the notion that, yes, the Gold Coast is more than just surface paradise. Yes. Uh, absolutely spot on. I used to live on the Gold Coast myself for five years, so I know it pretty well. Uh, but I've got to say on our stats, um, we're seeing declines everywhere. Okay. Uh, and it does include the established housing market since 2010. Now, the good news for existing owners is that we are seeing some evidence that stock listings are declining, declining in the established home market. So we're getting closer to a bottom there. But, you know, for example, the Gold Coast South, so away from all the units, over the past three years we're recording a 15.9% decline for houses over the past three years. That's substantial. Mm -hmm. We're seeing in the Northern and the Gold Coast and Coolangatta, which the caller mentioned, we've seen a 45% decline in house mm -hmm. prices. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, look, Brian, I have to agree with Louis in terms of most of the suburbs of the Gold Coast and the Gold Coast Shire. But I guess um, one of the things that, uh, that I've noticed myself is if we get right up to the top of that Shire, if we're thinking about uh, those areas that are bordering in the Logan Shire, which then becomes part of Brisbane and part of that corridor that goes out toward Ipswich, then I'm seeing that area having or starting to recover from a little bit too much investor sentiment that went into there about six or seven years ago. We saw a lot of first home owners uh, upgrading. We saw them then, um, we saw a lot of investors come in and buy those properties, units, townhouses and houses from the first home buyers and we saw a flood of rentals on the market. So then we saw yields come down, vacancies peak up and once that started to happen a lot of that investor sentiment went out of there. Where well, I'm now personally seeing some of those uh, South East uh, Queensland or South East Brisbane markets now starting to bottom out and start to turn the corner a little bit on the back of the, the massive infrastructure. But I can't include most of the Gold Coast in that assessment. I'm still finding that most suburbs in the Gold Coast are really being severely affected by an oversupply, by too much investor sentiment quite a few years ago and a lack of recovery from that at this point in time. Certainly, if anyone's got anything to um, add to that, please give us a call, 1300 30 34 35, or email us at property at skynews.com.au and tell us about it. We're going to go to the emails now, and our first email tonight is from Keith. Now, Keith's wondering about investing in Service Paradise also, and he said, I've had some sales info on new apartments in Service Paradise and all the transport and infrastructure going on for the Commonwealth Games. What are your thoughts on this area for investment? Now, since we've all but answered that, um, just let's talk now about those apartments in particular. Let's leave aside all of those suburbs for a moment. Noel, part of the problem is that we've had some really massive developments go into liquidation, and we've just seen stock pour onto the market at really discounted prices as the liquidators attempt to get rid of them. We have, yeah, and uh, it's, it's one of those markets that's had a really tough four years. and you know, four or five years, and, and unfortunately, um, you know, there's data there that's saying, uh, as, as Louis pointed out, that's saying it's it still lacks a lot of confidence. People in that area lack a lot of confidence. There are a little, there are a few little good signs. Uh, you know, I, saw, I was reading an article about some auction clearance rates um, in the Gold Coast. Uh, one of the agencies got together and had a mass auction um, and, and cleared a, a, a fair few properties. There were a fair few units in amongst that. Mm -hmm. um, the prices were uh, fairly heavily discounted and as we were looking before, you know, the properties are sitting on the market for 200 plus days. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of, uh, you know, bloodletting to go and a lot of getting out of the system. But still, to see some clearance rates and to see, I guess, especially in the last 12 months, comparing that to the three years before, uh, some of that discounting and some of that, um, that levelling out has slowed. Um, and maybe, maybe that's a sign that it's close to the bottom, but um, mm. you know, people grab onto things like the Commonwealth Games um, and, and, and think that a, a bit of spending like that's going to, you know, going to help them all out. But it, unfortunately, it's, just, it's, it's mm. just another thing that's going to come and go. Just quickly, Louis, um, with, in terms of those apartments, while we've seen generally a correction on the Gold Coast of 15 up to 20 per cent, we can see some of those apartments that can go for up to 50 per cent what they went for a couple of years ago. Oh, absolutely. I was mentioning before, in that report, which you can find on our website, uh, properties that were on the market sold in 2007 for, say, $560,000, begging for offers today at three fifty, dollars but really saying, hey, any offer. Yeah. That's the worst of it, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I really feel sorry for that owner in particular. Yes. Uh, they've really been caught out. And what this highlights is you, you've got to do your research. And, and as a novice investor, if you're a first-time investor, Margaret, the Gold Coast is not the place yeah. to buy your first property. But, of course, we all know that the reason why people buy it on the Gold Coast is because the Sprukers are very good at saying yes. to people, buy this beautiful apartment, they've got all the glossy brochures, and you can take a tax-paid trip twice a year to inspect it, which of course isn't exactly true anyway, because if you go to inspect your property and do anything other than inspect it and go right home, tax office calls it a holiday and they won't allow the claim anyway. And so we've got Sprugas doing a good job, people thinking that the investment dream is all about owning this great place you can talk about at barbecues, when in fact really often your bread and butter 
three bedroom house in a great burb somewhere makes a far better investment than one of those attractive apartments on the mm. Gold Coast. Look, we've got to take another short break, but we will be back soon. And now remember, if you do have a question for us on the, on the show tonight, give us a call on 1300 30 34 35 or email us at property at skynews.com.au. And if we answer it on the show and then pick your email or call as the caller of the week, you will receive one of my books. Don't go away. Welcome back to the program. We've got a great show for you tonight. Joining us is Louis Christopher from SQM Research and also Noel Petrohilos from BMT and Associates Tax Depreciation. If you have a question and you would like it answered, call us now on 1330 3435 or you can email us at property at We'll do our best to answer that question for you. And Chris, you've called us from Sydney and you've got a question about Woi Woi or the Central Coast, which is of course where I live, certainly the Central Coast. How can we help you? I'm just uh, looking for my first investment property and I was looking around Woi Woi Gosford area. Okay. Right, let's go to the panel and see what they have to say about that. And Louis, uh, Woi Woi and the wider coast. Yeah, look, the, the central coast did go through a downturn starting from about 2010 and started to come out of it last year, later last year. Woi Woi was negatively affected there on our numbers of declines were a about 8 to 10 percent, then it bottomed out and there's some evidence now that the market is recovering. Vacancy rates on the central coast have been actually very tight, mm. uh, so rents have actually been outperforming the Sydney-wide area. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I think there's been some mixed signals there. It's not exactly a very deep market, so that concerns me. I, I like Sydney over Woiwoi because it's a deeper market, there's always going to be a, quite a, a large number of buyers. Mm. Uh, so you've just got to be a bit careful about that. Uh, look, let me just give you some of my perspective from not only a resident on the Central Coast, but also, I guess, a property investment expert who invests widely, but also helps people to invest all over Australia. And I do a lot of travelling around and I speak to a lot of people, a lot of councils, and I really try to get the down low. I'd say that the Central Coast has actually had a much longer depression than that, in fact, somewhere around the 10 to 12 year mark before much has happened on the Central Coast in general. There's a lot of reasons for that. We have two councils on the Central Coast and both of them have heretofore been very much maintenance councils. So they haven't been involved in that much infrastructure planning. They've been waiting around for some state government funding to get some things done and they haven't really moved ahead a lot. Gosford in particular in the past has certainly shunned a lot of infrastructure development and a lot of developers have wanted to do some pretty good things there but the council has in the past rejected that so we've seen a really sluggish market for a long long time now Gosford council has come out and said they are open for business and I'm curious about that so I've actually got an interview with them next week to go and interview the mayor and the general manager to find out just what's changed according to the reports what they believe has changed is that they are now going to be looking for more development and they're going to look to help property on the central coast start to grow if that's the case and it works I can see it growing first of all in Gosford itself. There's a unit market there and as Louis says the vacancy rates are really quite low. I actually don't see a lot happening in Woi Woi. It is down there on the peninsula. It's quite the sleepier part of town and I think if you want to get anything out of the Central Coast you've got to look at either Gosford or some of those low markets like Wyoming and then up through places like um, up around Wyong um, and north up that way, San Remo, and those really lower markets where they've just about come to the end of their new building and some of those first homes are coming back on the market again. That's just my prognosis, but if you keep an eye out on property success on Saturdays, we will be doing gossip in the coming couple of weeks on that show. Next caller is Jason from Sydney, and you've got a question about the Inner East, Jason. Yes, hi Margaret, how are you today? Good. How are you? Good, good. I just have uh, two questions. One is your thoughts on the inner east of Sydney, the Surrey Hills or Darlinghurst area and how they're performing at the moment. Yes. And the second question I have for you tonight is um, if you had any tips uh, or strategies to buy prior to auction. Okay. 
Right, there's two good questions there. Uh, Noel, Surrey Hills, Petersham, all around that area, it's become really trendy, hasn't it? It has, sure there's has. There's a yeah. lot of investor and homeowner sentiment in that market at the moment. There is, and I think um, you've got to consider with those areas is, is what is around the corner. They've had some pretty solid uh, growth, um, you know, in the last uh, 18 months, and They've done quite well. Again, as I said before, um, they've got low vacancy rates. They're nice and strong. And if you can afford to invest there, I say go for it. You know, but um, for me, it is an expensive buy-in for an investment property, and um, I'd be looking at some areas that are looking to grow in the next 12 months rather than that have, that have just had their their bit of growth. But look, it's a they're, they're beautiful areas. They're very trendy areas. They're popular areas. They're becoming, um, I guess, that place where people really want to have a home. Mm. Um, close to Sydney, they've got a lot going for them. So you're not going to lose money, um, but are you really going to see that big ramp up uh, in prices in the next two years? I'm, I'm just not as mm. confident as I am with other areas that are a little bit further away. Mm. Uh, Lou, maybe as an owner of Akapara it makes a really good investment, but if you're really trying to get those big gains, it could be a little hot at the moment? Oh, I don't know, Margaret. On you my like stats, it? I do like, and I particularly like two-bedroom apartments around that area, and I'll mm -hmm. tell you why. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, for a long time, there had been no capital growth for two-bedroom apartments, particularly in the Paddington area. And meanwhile, we were getting all this capital growth in terraces and townhouses, to the point where, right now, if you bought a terrace in the area, it would cost about $1.9 million. But the two-bedroom apartment is still starting out at about $550,000. Mm -hmm. And the gross rental yield on that's running at about 6%, which is not actually that bad at all. Mm. And I've been watching this for a little while since the start of the year, particularly in Paddington, where I think there's a bit of a mispricing opportunity there. So I actually like it. I'm a bull on two-bedroom apartments in the inner city east. Excellent. What about uh, Surrey Hills? Surrey Hills, uh, similar situation. So I can tell you right now, um, apartments right now, they've got a median of about $576,000 uh, versus houses running at you know, basically one2 to 1.3, and that's really a terrace there, uh, the crummy old terrace of that as well in Surrey Hills. I like the apartments once again in Surrey Hills, so I'm, I'm a bull on that too. Okay, well there you have it. And um, as to your other question tips for buying before auction, it's a little difficult when you do have a hot market because most things are going to go at auction. And most people are going to wait for the auction for that very reason. The best thing you can do to get in before an auction is to get a fair idea of what the owners want in terms of price and what they're prepared to take if you can and then make that offer. In a hot market, you're unlikely to get too much of a bargain before auction. And as I said, most people will wait for that auction, particularly if the clearance rates have been really, really high. We've just got some time for a quick caller before we go to our next break. And Jacob from Brisbane, you want to know about buying the inner city in Brisbane versus going out to the suburbs. Hi, Margaret. Thank you for taking my call. Yeah, I was just wondering, I was watching a show on um, 8th of April, and there was a gentleman showing a graph um, listing prices of inner CDB areas across uh, capital cities in Australia uh, being much higher than um, the outskirts um, because I guess that's where the majority of people want to live. Um, yet on your roadshow you were saying that it's better to um, invest in the, out, in the outskirts because it's a myth that inner city, inner city suburbs gain most value. Mm, exactly. Now just to explain, um, Jake is saying that he heard a gentleman say that the prices are higher in the inner cities, which of course they are. My advice to people is they look at the outer suburbs at the moment in most capital cities because there's more room to move from a purchaser's point of view. And we are seeing some heat particularly out west of Sydney, south of Brisbane, um, south and north in Adelaide, Melbourne not so much mostly. I'm telling people that the heat's gone out of the Melbourne market. What do you think, Noel? Yeah, as, as, I, as I explained before, I, I'm an outskirts sort of person, but when those cities, right in the city, do go off, they go off with a bang. Yes, um, you but know, timing is so crucial, isn't timing it? Timing is so critical. You really need to be there on the buzzer, and it's so hard. A lot of the time, when you're reading about in the paper or you see the data, it's already happened. Mm. Um, so you really need to be in the market in the city to be in that. It's so much easier for investors to get in in the outskirts, um, and those outskirts, so they do tick away, and I think... Right now, the, the climate's all about the outskirts because a lot of the cities have performed fairly well over the last couple of years. So mm. I'd be I'd be steering more to the outskirts right now. But still, there's lot there's lots going for the city. Mm. Twenty seconds for you on this one, Lou. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I've just mentioned before that we've liked some of the inner city suburbs. 
we're seeing some good opportunities there. In Brisbane, less so. I'm still seeing a fair amount of stock in the market in the inner areas. Yeah. I generally agree with you, the outer areas are affordable. I wonder though whether they've had their run in the meantime. Mm. Yeah, well I'd like to argue that one with you for a long time. Uh, uh, just in terms of Brisbane, we saw a lot of stock go off the market in the floods and the GFC and much of that stock is now coming back on the market in terms of apartments in the city. I wouldn't be buying in Brisbane City at the moment, definitely be considering some of the suburbs. If we get some time tonight, we'll, we'll see if we can go through some of them. Thanks for tuning in. It's time for a break, but when we return, you'll have another chance to get hold of a copy of my most recent book, Investing in the Right Property Now. But you will have to ask a question, and you'll also have to have it selected by the panel at the end of the show. Simply call us now on 1300 30 34 35 or email us on property at skynews.com.au. Welcome back to Your Money, Your Call. I'm Margaret Lomas and it's been my pleasure to have with me on the show Noel Petrahilos from BMT and Louis Christopher from SQM Research. Now we've been busily answering your calls and there's plenty of them tonight which is great news. So if you have a question, call us now on 1300 30 34 35 or email us at property at skynews.com.au. Now just before we do go to the phones, I'd like to tell you about my seminar roadshow which is being run now and this week is our second week with a fabulous week last week and lots Lots of people coming along. Now this week I'm in Adelaide, Melbourne and Sydney as well as live online. In this presentation I'll be helping you to improve your investing success and guiding you through methods of assessing hotspots so that you can always be the first to find them. I'll also provide my much anticipated 2013 hotspot list so you can get ahead of the rest. Also speaking will be Legal Eagle Rob Belander and Rob Farmer from Property Management Group Run. I'll be at venues in Adelaide Melbourne and Sydney and also we will be streaming live on the internet. Now it's already 90% sold and Adelaide is on tomorrow night. To find out more and to get your tickets online go to destiny.com.au. And Rodney from Brisbane, what can we do for you tonight Rodney? G'day Margaret, g'day panel, thanks for taking my call. You're welcome. Um, I wanted to ask you, Margaret, I've got four investment properties. I've got three in Brisbane and one in Canberra, and I'm ready to go again. And I just wanted to know the panel's advice of where you'd go if you had 350 to 400 to spend. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, this isn't advice because we can't actually give any kind of personal advice. But if we're looking at markets 350 to 400, which I'm going to talk to you about that in a moment, Rodney, um, where would you invest? Obviously not Brisbane because Rodney's quite heavily weighted there already. No. Wow, uh, put me on the spot. I, I'd be looking at uh, Hunter Valley and Newcastle um, if I had that sort of money to spend. Um, not not right in the in the heart of Newcastle, but some of the surrounding suburbs. Um, uh, I went to university in Newcastle. I've been keeping a bit of a bit of an eye on it and just watching some of the little suburbs like uh, North Lambton and Cardiff um, for around that three to four hundred price. They've just been ticking away and not doing a whole heap. And uh, although they haven't done a whole heap in the last couple of years, my feeling is that there's so much going for it up there with the wine region, the t a little bit of tourism, and the mines, the massive coal port. Um, there's so much. Uh, there's so many drivers up there, and I'd be I'd be putting my money there in Newcastle or, or the Hunter Valley. Come in and watching you to make sure you do exactly that. What do you think, Louis? I'd be staying with Sydney. Uh, I think the middle ring. Go for two bedroom apartments. Go for basically something close to a railway line. Uh, it's a safe city right now. There's not a lot of stock coming onto the market. Vacancies are tight. I just don't see the situation changing anytime soon. Mm. Uh, Rodney, I'll preface what I'm about to say to you by saying that price is not your driving factor. So saying, well, I want to spend 300 to 350 to 400 will immediately make you go looking in markets that are 350 to 400. And while they could be good markets, you don't actually know that. Price is the last thing you consider after you go looking for the hotspots using really sound investing criteria. So that's the first thing. But it just so happens that in that price range at the moment, probably a little under the 350, closer to the $300,000 market, 
Oh, well, Mark, you've got a great uh, market over there in Rockingham in Perth. It's actually one of my hot spots this year. That's a little sneak peek for anyone coming along for the next couple of days to my seminars. And the beauty of Rockingham is that it has everything going for it, including some good proximity, good roads, good rails back into Perth. It's really undervalued for what you get in Rockingham and Rockingham itself and now its surrounding suburbs. So anywhere in the Shire is really shaping up to I believe give you some really really good growth and yield somewhere around the 6.2 percent or so mark so that's one I'd be looking at right now if I had that kind of money to invest Faye from Sydney what can we do for you tonight hi Margaret how are you Hello. how are you we're hi. good 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 um, my question tonight is is Rockdale which is in Sydney 2216 is the postcode. Is yeah. this a good place to buy an investment property? Okay. Does it have any growth drivers? And the last question is, buying a unit close to the station at Rockdale, is that better than buying a house closer to the beach at Rockdale? Okay. I'm just not sure there's a beach at Rockdale. There's certainly um, an airport very close by. Yeah. It's around the Cochrane beach. Market. But you're talking about, sorry? Brighton Beach. Brighton Beach, okay, yes. Um, yeah, sort of, it's not exactly a surfing beach or anything like that. It's a bit of a sand strip and it's very nice walking along there. I guess it all depends if you can get a view. Yes. Uh, if we're talking about getting a view there, that could be a totally different kettle of fish. Mm. Uh, but assuming there is no view, I probably would actually stay closer to the railway line. Okay. Uh, infrastructure would you, is still very important. What about important. Rockdale itself? Oh, look, I, I think in terms of the leading indicators we've got here, uh, very good. I mean, here's a chart. If, you, if the, it can show up there, that's stock on market, so that's a number of listings. Pretty clear the trend's going down in a quick way as well. Yeah. Uh, so that's an indicator that suggests that something is going on, something very positive is going on. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just a leading indicator, but I, if that continues, I would definitely say we'll get our performance in Rockdale at least for the next 12 months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, of course, we need it longer than 12 months, though, don't we, Noel? So looking out yeah. long term, I'm just wondering about some of the issues with flight paths and all sorts of other things around Rockdale. What do you think? Yeah, flight paths are an issue. Um, you know, being close to the airports are positive as well because it is a, an, an employer and there's jobs there. Um, so. You know, I, I think it's, it's one of those areas that, that is obviously the data is looking fairly healthy. I'd be, the, if you can get the same price close to the beach as opposed to the station, I'd be, I'd be probably going for that. But it's, mm. my, my stomach's telling me that's not going to happen. No. Um, and close to the uh -huh. station is probably going to be better value. Yeah, look, typically people always believe that they need to get near the beach. But if you have a look over the last 15 or so years, a lot of our beachside locations have been very patchy. They'll go like crazy, then they'll actually fall away. So you can get some really good gains, but you get bigger losses in beachside suburbs typically. Whereas some of those standard suburbs near all the services like railway lines tend to have much more solid growth and it's not quite so up and down. It's not such a rocky road. I'm not sure that Rockdale would be my first pick in hotspots, but I don't think you're going to lose in Rockdale. I guess the most important thing for you to know about those kinds of areas is that you've got to work out who lives there. And in Rockdale, you have very much families. About 10 years ago, a lot of the people who'd closely held those properties for a long time started to sell down or move on to, you know, the big uh, property investment in the sky and then after that we started to see some families move in. Therefore, because it's very solidly families, you're probably not going to want a unit. A house would be more likely to be something that's going to be more in demand. You'll probably get a better rental yield on the houses than you would on the units as well. Thanks for being with us. It's time for a break, but when we return, you'll have another chance to get your questions asked, answered simply by calling us on 1330 3435 or emailing us on property at skynews.com.au. Welcome back to Your Money, Your Call. I'm Margaret Lomas and joining me tonight on the show is Noel Petrohilos from BMT and Louis Christopher from SQM Research. Now we've been answering your calls about property investing and if you have a question and would like to be in the running to get a hold of a copy of one of my books, call us now on 1330 3435 or email us on property at skynews.com.au. Now our next question comes from Janine who has just bought her first investment and Janine asks, good evening, my husband and I have just bought 
bought our first investment probably three weeks ago. Congratulations to you both. It's a three bedroom home in Kingston, Tasmania, 10 minutes south of Hobart. We have lodged it with a real estate agent ready for rental. What are the most important items or steps we need to initially focus on to ensure, ensure we succeed with this investment? And that's from Janine. Okay, just quickly, Noel, what are your top tips for Janine and her husband? Top tips. Don't let it sit on the market too long for rent. If it's not going to rent out, drop the rent quickly. Um, get a pay as you go, go withholding variation. Get the cash in your pocket, pocket fortnightly rather than waiting till the end of the financial year. And get a good quality depreciation schedule straight up. And, and even though there's only a little bit of the financial year left, um, you can, there's little tricks that quantity surveyors use, uh, you know, depreciation specialists like BMT, to get that even though it's a, even if someone buys in the last week of a financial year, there's still a substantial deduction there. So people should be getting those done straight away. Yeah, and look, if she settled three weeks ago, she's actually probably got two full months of depreciation she can claim. There'd be a little bit there anyway. Two full months, and when we allocate assets to those low value pools in immediate write off, um, it doesn't matter how long you've owned them for, they get the full rate of depreciation regardless of the time. So even if there's only a day left of the financial year, we can do that. Love your work, Noel. Thanks for that. Louis, Thanks, what are your tips for Janine? Oh, I think Janine's actually bought pretty well in terms of timing. Uh, we're seeing some evidence that the Tasmanian market's finally bottoming out oh. after a, another two years. After year 350 period. years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it, it went, to be fair, it went through a period where we did see some good real estate price gains throughout the noughties, uh -huh. and then it stopped and actually really died off from about two. 2010. Uh, in this particular area in Kingston, real estate prices have come off by about 8%, but the most recent indicators are suggesting that prices have stopped falling and those crucial real estate listings in terms of supply, well that's falling off as well. So it's suggesting there is actually a little bit more activity in the market. It's still overall a, a bit of a, a weak market. I think we'd like to see another cut in interest rates and that could really get things going along. Mm -hmm. But I think the period of price falls is now over for Tasmania. Mm. And look, just to add my tips to you as well, Janine, you need to be getting a tenant in straight away and that means watching your property manager to ensure that if the rent they're asking doesn't achieve a tenant instantly that you drop your rent. A lot of people don't like doing that, but if you think about it, it's better to get $20, $30 a week less in rent than it is to go three weeks without a tenant. That $20 or $30 a week less in rent over time or over at least a period of six months isn't going to be as much as weeks on end without a tenant. The next thing that I advise you to do, apart from all the things that Noel has mentioned, is to make sure that in terms of your property management agreement that you have a very short termination period less than two weeks. It'll have in the fine print there, it'll have a set amount. Often it's a, a month, sometimes it's longer. Cross it out, ask for two weeks. If the property manager doesn't agree to two weeks, then get a different property manager. If you and your property manager don't get along or they're not doing a good job for you, you want to be able to get rid of them as quickly as you can. Our next caller is Paul from Sydney. Uh, Paul, you're talking about investing in Quest Apartments. That's right. Uh, I'd like to check the panel, uh, their opinion of investing in through the Quest Apartments. Um, they have got the fixed rental um, and uh, service department there. I'm particularly in, interested in uh, Melbourne or Sydney. Okay. If they could tell me the pitfalls and uh, of investing through the Quest. Okay. Now look, I don't want to talk specifically about any one company here. And so to just uh, clarify for the viewers, we don't have a particular opinion about any company who has uh, service departments and this is a service department option. Let's just talk very generally and very quickly because we don't have a lot of time on the clock about being an investor and buying a service department, Louis. Yeah, well, I agree with you, Mike. It's impossible for us to talk about one specific block of apartments. <laughs> I've never covered Quest before, so how can we possibly comment? But speaking about service department generally, the pros are you'll generally see a higher rental yield uh, so that's one positive to it, so often they can be cash flow positive. The cons, well, there's a few. Um, I don't like the reselling availability there. You don't see a lot of buyers. The banks generally don't like them that much, so that cuts out a lot of your target market when you're reselling. Uh, and I don't like how some of these contracts are structured where the property manager has a lot of say over that property. Mm. Uh, that scares me off. Mm. Okay, so some positives and negatives from you, Noel. The positives are depreciation is very good on those because there's the furniture and you know the furniture gets some great depreciation. All the fixtures and fittings are shiny and well maintained and they're, they're usually a good quality so the depreciation deductions are good. Um, 
I've seen some people make some great money off service departments, but just be careful. The investment's got to stand on its own two feet um, alone. And sometimes when you see some fixed uh, uh, rent, things like that, um, it, it just can be a little bit difficult to, to compare it eggs with eggs. Mm, yes. And look, I also just want you to be a little bit careful with any kind of investment that you don't let any scheme of arrangement or rent guarantee mask any underlying performance and stop you from doing the right kind of research. It's not the particular property itself. It's not whether it's got a tin roof, whether it's brick, whether it's actually an apartment or whether it's owned by a, run by a large company or a small company. It's whether or not it is built in an area that satisfies the criteria for good investing. So what tends to happen when people buy into properties where there's some kind of a guaranteed rent is they feel so comfortable and reassured by that guaranteed rent that they don't do the right kind of research. They get a guaranteed rent but if that finishes or the particular company running the, that apartment block moves on, as can often happen with hotel operators, and suddenly there's no more rent guarantee, then very often these properties could be situated in an area that didn't make good investing in the first place. So then offloading it can be difficult, particularly with no more rent guarantee. I just want you to first of all ask yourself the question, are the areas that I'm looking to buy an investment property in, are they good, solid investing areas? Do they satisfy the 20 questions for a good hotspot? If so, and then you can buy an apartment that is at market value, and what I mean by that is valued and priced at the same price that a non-service department would be in the same area, then we're talking turkey and that rent guarantees a bit of icing on the cake. Thanks for tuning in. It's time for our last break. But when we return, we'll, of course, answer more of your questions and some more email. To have yours answered, call us now on 1330 3435, or you can also email us on property at Welcome back to Your Money, Your Call. I'm Margaret Lomas and it's been a great night with special guests Noel Petrohilos from BMT and Louis Christopher from SQM Research. We've been busily answering, answering your calls and now we have our last caller on the line, Rachel from New South Wales. How can we help you? Oh, hi, Margaret. Thanks so much for taking my call. I was just wondering your thoughts on the future growth of Shepparton and um, Rosebud down at the Mornington Peninsula. Okay, excellent. Now, look, we've only got about 30 seconds each on this one. Noel, are you familiar with either of those two areas? Not, not really familiar with okay. those areas. I might leave uh, Louis. To Give Louis 45 yeah. seconds. Louis, just quickly, either of those areas. Uh, look, I, I don't know them very well, uh, Margaret. I'm just waiting to see get some stats now. And look, Rosebud is very marked. Uh, tourism area right down there on the Mornington Peninsula. Yeah. Pretty small, pretty cute, pretty quaint, but I'm not sure about Rosebud, it. Rosebud, we've got uh, a 1.6% decline in houses and a small gain on units. Okay. Shepparton, on the other hand, may have some life in it. In fact, I am going to Shepparton in two weeks' time, chat to the mayor down there. I'm going to find out more about that and bring that to you on Property Success on Saturdays. So, Rachel, keep an eye out for that. Shepparton will be on the show in about six weeks' time, and I'm sure that I'll find some good information while I'm there. That just about wraps up another week in property investing. Of course, we'll be back here again next Monday, and joining me then will be two new guests. Don't forget, you can come along and chat to me in person at my seminars this Tuesday in Adelaide, Wednesday in Melbourne, and Thursday in Sydney, or online. More details from my website, destiny.com.au. Now, I'm giving away a double pass to each, or a couple of double passes to each of those venues. They're worth $80. To get hold of one, send an email with the city that you require in the subject line to your money your call at destiny.com.au there it is on the screen for you your money your call at destiny.com.au uh, send it send it along I'll send you the double passes and I'll take the first two emails in each state which is Adelaide or South Australia Victoria and New South Wales as well as uh, a double pass for online as well thanks to all of our callers this week we're giving the book away to Elanco Elanco you were our very first caller tonight and you were asking about Concord we all think that the book would really help you to centre in on where you should be investing right now. If you can email me on your money or call at destiny.com.au, I'll send you your book. 
You can follow me on Twitter, Margaret Lomas AU, and also on Facebook. And if you go to destiny.com.au and become a VIP, you will be able to get my free week, uh, monthly newsletter. Thanks for being with us. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week. The information featured in this program is general in nature and therefore should not be relied upon. Guests appearing on the program may have commercial arrangements with some of the companies.